Hey guys, what's going on? It's Blade again from Car Audio Security and today we're looking at a brand new Sony unit, the XAV AX4050. Okay, so the AX4050, what do we have here? So this is a brand new product from Sony, completely revised head unit, looks completely different and has a number of features. So first of all, this is Sony's first wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto unit. We'll have wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, as well as all of their main features, such as Bluetooth, hands-free calls, DAB radio, FM, and many, many others. So we're gonna do the usual of opening it up, show you the contents, we'll power the unit on, and then go through the main features with the unit in front of us. Okay, so to quickly go through the contents of the box, first of all, you have your USB extension. Now, this unit is USB-C, uh, so you have a USB-C extension, and they also do give you uh, an adapter, so if you don't have a USB-C cable, uh, you can adapt a normal USB. Uh, this here is your output plug, so this will plug into the back of the unit, and then you have your three pre-outs, so front, rear, and sub. Uh, and you also have a camera input as well. This is your GPS antenna. Now, because it's wireless CarPlay, this must be connected to allow the wireless CarPlay to work. And you also get a magnet plate as well, so if you're sticking it to the top of the unit. This is your Bluetooth microphone. Nothing fancy, just a standard Sony Bluetooth mic. They also give you a flat-mounted adapter, so it comes with a like a headliner clip. Uh, they also give you a flat-mounted adapter with a sticky pad on that as well. You have the fascia trim, your main power loom, and then you have the unit itself. Okay, so to go through the physical features on the unit before we power it on and go through the internal features, uh, starting with the face of the unit. So this is a 6.95 inch display. This is a resistive touchscreen, and this also has an anti-glare film on the screen. So it's all, almost like a matted uh, screen. So if you do get sun on there, it's not gonna be reflecting like a clear glass kind of style screen. They've done a central button panel. Rather than the whole bottom of the screen being kind of a stick out button panel, they've done it more central, which I quite like. It, it changes it up a little bit. Now coming to the side, you'll see as most Sony double dins are, it is a single din chassis, which makes life installing a lot easier. Uh, but also what they've done is even still made it shallower. So a standard Sony unit, the single din chassis part of it will come out to probably about here. So they've made it, I believe it's about 15 mil shallower. So basically what they've done is they've got rid of the pre-outs directly on the back of the unit. So they've made it even shallower still. So again, just makes life a lot easier when it comes to installing. Now on the back of the unit, We'll go through the, the connections quickly. So here we have the FM input plug, microphone input, DAB input, steering wheel remote input, GPS input, pre-out input, power loom input, and USB input. Now the main difference on the back of the unit uh, from other Sony units to make it shallower as stated is the pre-out input plug. So most of the time you'll have the actual inputs on the back of the stereo, so you plug your RCAs directly in. This has been done on a separate loom plug, which I showed you earlier. Uh, that just makes it a lot shallower and not having to have too much internals going on in the unit. Okay, so before we turn the head unit on, we're gonna show you the actual start-up time from completely off. The Sony units have always been pretty quick to start up. They do actually have a, a feature in them that gives them the ability to start up quickly, which is always nice. Uh, so we're gonna time the startup as we usually do. So we've got my power connection here. The unit's all wired in, so let's give it a plug in. In three, two, one, it's plugged. Okay, 
There we go, and we're on. So uh, very quick start up time. It does not take long at all. Uh, so when you initially turn the unit on, you will be met with a kind of uh, startup screen, which allows you to kind of set your time, date, region, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, this unit has been on before, so it's not showing that. So uh, let's start going through the features. Okay, so we have the unit on, let's go through the functions. Uh, so when you have it in your home screen mode, this is what you'll come to. So nice simplistic Sony standard background. You can obviously change the background if need to in the settings, which we'll go through in a second. Uh, but along the bottom here are your main functions. So you have your standard radio, so that's FM and AM. You have your DAV, uh, Bluetooth for music, and phone for calls for Bluetooth. And then you have your settings, and obviously you have your clock up here and then the time displayed. At the bottom here, all of your buttons are lit up. So you have your home button, your volume up and down. Uh, this is a multi-use uh, kind of special button as it is. You can change the, uh, the use of that. It's standard set as mute, so you can quickly mute it. Uh, but you can also change that to something else, which I'll go through in a moment. Next to that, you have your forward re rewind, skip, tracks button and then you have your voice button which is usually used for Siri or any kind of hand free voice commands that you use for your CarPlay or Android Auto. Also if you tap on all apps this will bring up all the available apps on this device uh, so you also have USB, reverse cam and devices. This is very very simplistic there's not really much to it very touch responsive screen it, although it is a, a resistive touch screen not capacitive it's still nice and touch responsive. You don't have to push it to touch it and the screen resolution is not too bad, to be honest. So this is how your radio is gonna come up. These will be your preset channels and then you can choose between FM and AM on here and then you can scan. You can have auto scan, so seek and it will find whatever stations are available and then you can press and hold that and that will preset your station. You can also change the manual tune and then you can manually go into whatever station you're after. And again, press and hold and that will preset that selection. 18 available presets. And up here you have all your radio options. Now, DAB, same kind of concept. You go into DAB, you have your presets available and then you scan through to find your stations. So you just seek through and that will find your available stations. Uh, this again is your options for the DAV radio. If you want to find the list of stations, you can tap up here on these uh, three lines. We don't have a DAB antenna connected, so it's not going to show me any stations, but if you tap up here, that will show you all the available stations. You can click on one and then preset it on the left there. Now, Bluetooth for music, very self explanatory. You pair your phone, allow audio streaming, and then that will come up with what's playing if you're just using the Bluetooth for music streaming. Uh, same goes for the phone. So the phone, if you've paired your phone and allow contact sync, that will show you all your contacts available and obviously all your ingoing and outgoing calls. If we go into settings, obviously all the settings for the device are on here. Uh, so you can go into device connection, add a new device and pair your phone. Sound, you have a few sound settings in this. It's not loads and loads of options like some other head units. They keep it nice and simple. Everything you need is there. Uh, they've not put too much in there. So you have a standard 13 band EQ. Uh, you have preset EQs that you can choose from. So you can change it between there. Or if you go back over to off, you can then manually adjust however you want it. And then you can save that as a custom preset. You have a balance and fader, which you can change however you need to. You have listening position. So this is basically your time alignment. So you can have preset time alignment, so say front, front left, front right, or you can set a custom one, which you can then adjust. If you're using an actual time alignment device, you can then preset that in there, and then you can change it from centimeters to inches, if, depending on how you like to measure stuff, basically. If you scroll up, you then have your crossover settings. So you have high pass filter for front and rear, separate and a low pass filter for your sub. Uh, again, if you, if you know what you're doing with this, you'll know this is very self-explanatory. You can set high pass filters, low pass filter, and then you can change the phase of the sub through that as well. That's basically it for your audio settings. So again, like I said, there's not too much to it. They've not over, uh, overdone it with the settings. 
Uh, so it's nice, nice and easy to go through. Customize allows you to change the wallpaper. So you can change whatever wallpaper background you want. You also have the ability to download up to two USB file backgrounds to the device, and then you can obviously have whatever, whatever picture you want in the background. Now, top one is custom button, which is this center one here. You can change that to be either mute or source change. So if I set it to source change, and I am in Bluetooth, for instance, I can just tap that, and that will change the radio. So it gives you basically a preloaded option for what you want. So you keep tapping it, it'll go between the sources. Uh, if we come back to the settings page, you've got application, and that changes the camera display. So you can basically change the camera view to flip to whatever you need to. Camera interruption, if you want it to interrupt when you put it into reversed, you can turn that on and off. And then guideline adjustment, you can do that as well when you have a camera connected. And then lastly, you have your system settings, which are your main things you can go through, change time, date, language, uh, steering wheel settings, volume settings, all that kind of stuff you can mess around with in there. So that's the main functions of the unit. Like I said, there's really not too much to it. It's very, very simplistic, uh, very easy to use. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll show you how to pair the phone for Android Auto, uh, as I have an Android phone. It's the same concept for Apple CarPlay. Uh, so let me show you that. Okay, so I have my phone here. So easiest way to pair your phone for Android Auto is to connect it via Bluetooth. So what we'll do is we'll scroll down, I can press and hold Bluetooth, obviously make sure Bluetooth is on, and then you're gonna scroll down to find the newest, newest available devices. So if it doesn't straight away pop up, see we've not got it here, so it's gonna come up with the part number of the unit, which is AX4050. So if we can't see it here, easiest way to find it is if we go into settings, device connection, add a new device, and then you should find, it's gonna come up, so we'll hit scan. So we wanna hit pair on here, and then see it's asked for pairing on that, so pair. There we go, so start, start Android Auto, use your phone as on the screen, yep, so start. We wanna allow access to contacts, from the phone as well. There we go, so it's automatically started Android Auto for us. Uh, so we just hit continue on here. And then we can put our phone away and everything is available through your Android Auto as standard. So you've got your apps and your music playing on the left there. You can then go into all the available apps through the head unit and then go into that as needed. If you tap this voice button, that will activate Siri or the, the same thing for Android. You can speak to the device through your Bluetooth microphone. So say, take me to Trafalgar Square and it will set you that through your uh, navigation device. If you wanna come out of this, you can either hit the home button and that'll come out and then you've got Android Auto to go back in. Or you can go to your apps and then you have Sony here. Tap on Sony and that will take you back. Okay guys, so that was the overview of the brand new Sony XAV AX4050. So I think it's a fantastic unit. The layout's absolutely brilliant. Very, very simplistic, very easy to use. So if you're someone that's not looking for loads and loads of settings to go through and uh, very difficult to find different applications, this is definitely the unit for you. As I've said, this is Sony's first wireless CarPlay unit. Um, and very competitively priced as well. So as of today's filming, price on our website is £469. Uh, so one of the cheapest uh, wireless CarPlay units out there at the moment. Uh, so that's very, very good. Um, as I've said, this is a resistive touchscreen. Now they do have another unit that's just come out as well, which is the 6050 that has a capacitive touchscreen. We're gonna review that in a later video. So if you're interested, make sure you keep an eye on the channel and we'll have that up very, very soon. Uh, but yeah, my views on the unit, fantastic. I love the layout and the, just the simplicity of it all is just very, very nice. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed the video. Make sure you smash the like button, subscribe if you're new, share it to your friends, and I will see you in the next video.